Welcome to Moo Moo Math and Science. In this video, let's work on word problems that are solved using the greatest common factor. Let's get started and then I'll make some comments. Kate has 32 roses and 42 tulips. She wants to make flower arrangements with the same number of each flower in each arrangement. What's the largest number of arrangements she can make? How many roses will be in each arrangement and how many tulips? Okay, first, word problems for the greatest common factor. They generally ask for groups, rows, or sections. Groups, maybe rows or sections. And then often they will ask for the greatest or maybe the largest. Okay, those are kind of your giveaways. Okay, a lot of times they don't ask, but in this particular problem, they're asking for the largest. And then all you have to do is find the greatest common factor and go from there. So let's solve this. Okay, so I know that they're asking for the largest number of arrangements. So they're asking for groups. So I will begin by finding the greatest common factor of 32 and 48. Okay, I like to use a factor tree. Now remember the greatest common factor, it's a factor. So it's going to be equal to or less than 32 or equal to or less than one of these two numbers. So let's get started. I know that. Okay, to save a little bit of time, I went ahead and drew out the factor tree for each one. 32, 2 times 16, then 2 times 8, 2 times 4, 2 times 2. Okay, if you need to know how to do a factor tree, I'll, I'll leave a link for a video on how to do this. Now, here's something that is really, really helpful. What I do after this is I place them in a small chart. Okay, so I'm going to write 2, 2, 2, 2, and 2. Okay, and then I'll do the same for 48. It's got a 2, then a 2, a 2, and a 2. Okay. And then a 3. And notice I'm going to skip over this because it's not a 2. And the rule for the greatest common factor is you need, since we have two numbers, you need to have two numbers in each uh, column in order to bring it down. So there's a 2 here, and a 2 here, and a 2 there, and a 2 there. I do not bring down this 2 because there's not another number there, and the same with the 3. And then you just multiply these together. And that will give you your greatest common factor, which is 4, 8, uh, looks like 16. Let me double check my math. And yes, that is correct. So now I know that the greatest common factor for 32 and 48 is 16. So let's answer these questions. What is the largest number of arrangements she can make? Well, that will be 16. How many roses? Well, they have 32 roses. I'll put an R there and a T here. And so you take 32 divided by 16, and that is 2. So you can make, you place two roses in each one. And then for 48, uh, how many tulips you take, excuse me, I got ahead of myself. How many tulips will be in each arrangement? And that is 48. So 16 divided by 48 is 3. So you'll have 3 tulips. So in summary... You'll have 16 groups, you'll have two roses, and the way I got that was I took the number of roses and divided by the greatest common factor, and then you'll have three tulips in each arrangement. The way I got that, there's 48 tulips, and I divided it by the greatest common factor of 16. So that is three. So there's problem number one. Let's work another example. Okay. Example number two, Adam is making baseball card sets to sell. He has 12 Yankee cards and 32 Cub cards. How many sets can he make? How many Yankee cards will be in each and how many Cub cards will be in each? Okay, first again, greatest common factor. It doesn't act ask for the greatest or largest, but it's asking for sets. Remember, groups, rows, sections, sets are all clues that it's a greatest common factor problem. So let's first find the common greatest common factor of 12 and 32. Again, I'm going to use a factor tree, and I will speed things up, so hang on. Okay, so I went ahead and created a factor tree for each one. 12 
2 times 6 is 12. 2 times 3 is 6. I circle the prime numbers. 32. 2 times 16 is 32. 2 times 8 is 16. 2 times 4. And then 2, 2. And notice I circle all of the prime numbers. Now, I set up my chart. Remember, you do not have to use a factor tree for the greatest common factor. I just think it's the easiest for myself. So I'm going to write the numbers. Okay, I'm going to write the 2, the 2... I'm going to skip here because I don't have another 2 here, 2 and 2. Remember, the rule is if you, you have to have 2 in the column, so I have 2 and 2, which is equal to 4. So the greatest common factor, it's barely on there, isn't it? The greatest common factor of 12 and 32 is 4. Now let's see if we can't solve the problem. Okay, so now we know that we have the greatest common factor of 4, we have 12 Yankee cards, and we have 32 Cub cards. So, how many sets can we make? Well, we know that we can make four sets, because that's the greatest common factor. Now, how many will be Yankee cards? You basically just take the number of Yankee cards and divide it by 4, which is 4 goes into 12 three times. So, you're going to have three Yankee cards in there. And now, for Cub cards, you take 32 Again, divide it by the greatest common factor, and uh, 4 goes into 32 eight times. Okay, and so you will have three Yankee cards and 32 Cub cards. Now, if you would like to check your work, notice that you have... 12 Yankee cards, 32 Cub cards for a total of 44. You're going to have 8 Cub cards, 3, excuse me, 3 Yankee cards. So we can just take 44 divided by 11, and that should equal 4, which is the number of groups, and it does. So if you want to check your work that way, you can. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching, and remember, kindness multiplies kindness. Be kind to someone today.